It's amazing to me how much has changed in 12 years. There's a hangover from the 1920s and 30s with buildings that used to be really attractive. Lots of people have said they're going to develop this area. It never is going to happen. You can see and feel what it used to be like, and you wonder what would bring it back. So what's so fascinating about Cleveland and Midtown is from 1860 to 1930, there was a tremendous amount of wealth created in this community. You know, if I could go back to that Gilded Age, I'd probably want to meet the Rockefellers. He lived on Euclid Avenue, and so his friends lived on Euclid Avenue. They all belong to the same club, and it's house after house, and everyone's trying to outdo each other. It would be really great to go back in time and see what Euclid Avenue was like when it was Millionaire's Row. If we had Millionaire's Row right on Euclid Avenue here, we could literally walk up and down the street and raise funding like that. By the 1930s, most of the mansions are gone. We had vacant buildings, brownfields, junkyards. It was a blown out area. I was driving in a car with a guy named Ken Fleming, who was a broker with our company. He drove me, after we were going to lunch, to Midtown and said, you should buy this property. And it was a used car parking lot. And there was a guy who owned it, and there were two very large, scary dogs who were there on purpose to keep you off the property. Ken and this guy were friends, and he brought me on. And I remember to this day thinking, this is the worst property I've ever seen. While we were doing this, the economy just completely tanked. Here's a terrible economic environment which we could use to create an opportunity. There's going to be a lot of incentives available from the city and from the state. And I looked at this and said to myself, maybe that's not that crazy of an idea. The Cleveland Clinic was growing. You could see in other parts of the country, medical innovations and medical expansions had made neighborhoods better. And here's a really ugly property in a growing neighborhood. And it was at that point I thought, this is a really good idea. So I took this idea to a friend of mine named Fred Geis. Well, Fred is one of the guys that was probably the most committed to seeing development happen in the city of Cleveland. One of the goals I'd set early in my life for myself was not to build a building or develop a few buildings, it was to change the neighborhood. Fred and I went to the city and the state and said, we will build an empty, speculative office building. If you want to have true innovation and if you want to have true economic development, you got to have partnerships. Public sector can't do it alone, private sector can't do it alone, nonprofit sector can't do it alone, but magic happens when they all work together and they form a partnership. So we looked at, okay, what, what types of businesses might want to be here? And we said, what about medical technology companies? Unfortunately, what happened was we couldn't get a bank loan. Nobody would lend in Midtown. Everyone said, you are crazy. So we went to Mayor Jackson and we said, Mayor, we're gonna need a big loan to make this happen. And the mayor said, make it so, get it done. So then we had to build a 125,000 square foot, brand new, first class office building with no tenants in a market that had never been tested before. Transportation, food, healthcare. Those are the three largest expenses most people have in their lives. And minimizing some of those would be bringing jobs to difficult neighborhoods. Terry Coyne has proven himself time and time again to me to be a very creative guy, think out of the box. He came up with this idea, let's look at Midtown. We went to a company called Jumpstart. We met a guy named Ray Leach. What we do is we bring together capital, services, and connections that can advance tech companies as well as small businesses across Northern Ohio. We have a building that needs jump starting. Jumpstart was around six years old. We had a team of maybe 40 people and we were just outgrowing the space. We were really excited about the opportunity to move into a new neighborhood that had huge potential. With Ray signing on and Jumpstart signing on, his imprimatur was such that people were like, oh, well, Jumpstart's moving in. They're building a new building. There must be something going on. It was about connecting the dots and making something big, far bigger, to explode into something called an innovation cluster, an innovation corridor. That's what economic development's all about. People think of just building a shiny new building. It's not. There's lots of cities with lots of shiny new buildings. But there are not a lot of cities that take those shiny new buildings and they connect them with other incubators like hospitals. What's amazing to me is how many smart people 
are in the buildings. Our site is an eye bank. We procure eye tissue for corneal transplantation and vision research. So our goal is to really eradicate corneal blindness worldwide. Uh, we provide tissue for about 8,000 corneal transplantation surgery on an average every year. And it's really the home of new next generation innovation in this field. You know, we talk about economic development and innovation in terms of job statistics and dollars. But what it really is is stories. Stories of human beings who are affected by the companies that grow because of that innovation. And Eversight is a perfect example. They could be in the suburbs or they could, they could have moved to Boston, but here they are. I did a little piece to keep these folks here and they're doing important work. I mean, at the end of the day, there's not much I can do to change the world. You know, I can watch them change the world in a building that I own. My clients have brought me to tears more than once, seeing some of the cures that they're working on, seeing some of the children they've come to this neighborhood. Diseases that cannot be cured anywhere else in the world, and they're coming to Cleveland because these companies stayed in Cleveland. It really makes me feel good about what I've done. We need jobs like the ones I've had, and I've had so much fun. It's just, you know, we need just more of them, and places like Midtown can help us do that. It's amazing to me how much has changed in 12 years. And I don't think at the time, even then, my 35-year-old optimistic self never would have imagined.